Okay, so I had a comment on yesterday's video uh, and it was from TB Martin. I wonder if that Ethernet to Wi-Fi adapter works with Risk OS on Raspberry Pi. And uh, I haven't done a video on Risk OS, so I thought I'd give it a try. So I did a bit of searching and uh, if I click on this tab, uh, you can see that they announced that uh, Risk OS was working on the Pi 400. But they also just said that it's in the ordinary Raspberry Pi imager. And I must have stumbled across this, but uh, I don't know why I haven't tried it up until now. So let's start up Imager. And choose OS. And this has got better and better, this Raspberry Pi Imager. So I always use it to erase uh, SD cards, hard drives, and various different things, install custom images. But some of the ones that are already here, which it downloads and installs for you, are super easy. So other general purpose OS, and you can see Risk OS for Pi. And then down the bottom here, we've got Pi 400, which was released on 20th of December, and it's a 0.1 gigabyte download, so it's tiny. Choose SD card, let's just pop one in. So the 120 gig is my Twister OS drive, and this 16 gig sound disk is the one I'm going to install it to. So hit right, and yes. Okay, so that's all done, so we can shut that down. Eject the SD card and pop it in the Pi 400. I'm also going to pop in uh, my Vonitz adapter from my video yesterday. Uh, so I'm just going to plug it into one of the USB sockets. In this case, it's USB 3 because I've got my mouse into USB 2. And pop in my HDMI and USB-C and it starts booting on its own and I'll switch back into screen capture. Okay, so the desktop looks very nice. Um, I did have a look at uh, a bit of everything computers video and uh, it's not a conventional operating system. This originates back from 1987 and it was developed by Acorn Computers uh, and it was designed for ARM processors, so that's a good thing. But back in 1987, which is incredible really, uh, so what does it say here? Welcome to Risk OS Pi 400. This is the official Risk OS distribution for the Raspberry Pi 400. Risk OS is a fast, compact, and efficient British operating system designed specifically for the ARM processor by the same team who created the original ARM. It's developed and tested by a loyal community of developers and users. Risk OS is not a version of Linux, nor is it in any way related to Windows. It has a number of unique features and aspects to its design, which we think make it special. So it's great the fact that this is still maintained and there's a forum and uh, it's been worked on for so long. Uh, so let's have a look at the internet and see if my Ethernet adapter is working. So click on the internet, so that comes up nice and quick. Let's just click on BBC News, no. Slash dot, no. Just going to try plugging my ordinary Ethernet in. So I'm unplugging the Vonex one now, the little uh, Ethernet Wi Fi adapter. So I've got ordinary Ethernet plugged in now. BBC News. No, it's exactly the same. Okay, so I'm just restarting. Uh, I do like the way it does this uh, little sort of terminal that comes up in the main loading screen. Uh, that's quite interesting. But uh, just to show you that I've gone back to using the Vonitz adapter because I have managed to get it to work, but I can't really say how I got it to work because I literally tried for about five, 10 minutes uh, clicking things, trying things, and eventually I got it to work. So it is working with this adapter, but even with my ethernet cable, it doesn't work straight off for me for some reason, um, but now it's working, it works with both ethernet cable and this adapter work fine. So to get the internet working, uh, I was just looking in this uh, configure option under network and oh, single click, and I'm sure it was under the internet one. Uh, so I can't remember this was ticked, uh, but if you have a look at my settings and see if there's anything, I think I might have ticked primary interface as well, but uh, it definitely wasn't working before uh, and it is all up and running now. I have the internet. Uh, so let's do that first of all. In fact, no, before we do that, Let's address this black bar. So first of all, we need to go down to the bottom with the files bit. Uh, and then on this iBoot, if you, if you hit shift and double click, that gives you this folder. Uh, and then where it says PC loader, double click that. And then config.txt, double click that. 
here we are. So here we have something that looks a bit more familiar. Uh, and it looks like from the instructions, it's got to be beneath the Pi 4 bit. Uh, so I'm going to put it in here. So uh, I'm going to overclock at the same time. So over underscore voltage equals 6. And arm underscore frequency equals 2000. Let's not go too silly. Uh, it's So the Pi 400 is as standard as 1800. Uh, so I'm only going up a little bit. I probably don't need an over voltage of six, but let's just leave it as, as it is. And also let's do disable underscore overscan equals one and see what that does. Right, will this let me save it? I don't even know where to save it. It's gonna be that, I guess. Nothing happens when you hover over things. I'm gonna try that. Okay, so we'll just hit save, save it as the name it is. I'm guessing that's done it. Let's close it and then open it up again. Config.txt. Yeah, so it looks like it's in there. Let's restart and see what happens. Hopefully it restarts. Oh, and to restart, it's down the bottom here uh, and you middle click, so your scroll wheel on your mouse uh, and then you've got shut down and restart. Okay, so it's rebooted. Uh, I can't really tell if the overclock has taken effect because I don't actually know where to check that. Let's just have a look and see. Oh, there's a CPU option here. Fast mode and strict mode. Well, it looks like it doesn't tell you about it though. CPU, if I middle click it, info, configure, plug in CPU, CMOS, help. No, it doesn't seem to be there. There's obviously a way of finding out. Uh, but let's not worry about that. I'm sure it is uh, working at two gigahertz. So let's show the internet to show that that still works. I did have the internet drop out again, um, and I just went through the settings. It seems to be about the setting it's a primary device or something, um, but uh, I'm not exactly sure because I had to restart several times to get it to work. The browser resembles a mobile browser. Um, so this is the BBC page. You would normally have all the options along the top here. Uh, if I make it bigger, can I drag it? Yeah, I can I can make it bigger, but it doesn't fill the page and you get this drop down menu. Uh, so if I was to go for, I was looking for sport, where's sport? There's no sport. <laughs> Let's go for UK, unless it's down further on. Oh yeah, sport's down here. Look. There you go. And so we don't get the sort of uh, rich pictures and things like that that we normally get. I don't know if we can search just in here. Can we just delete everything and search like a normal browser? Let's have a look. I know this isn't about the browser, this system, but yeah. So it looks like you then have to put in all the uh, www.uk deals. Oh, I need the .co.uk as well. .co.uk. Oh, and it's com. Uh, oh, this looks, is it going to pick up the pictures? Yeah, so the web browser definitely isn't its strong point. I was interested in the uh, the store though, that was quite that was quite nice because um, this is where you get your games from. So again, if we double click, the store opens up and then we can go to catalog, 29.99, hardware graphics acceleration. Um, but I've downloaded some games. Uh, in fact, if I go back and do categories and click games and then do catalog, this will only show me the games now. And I have downloaded some things. You can see Doom Trilogy there, uh, Cyborg, Countdown, Crosses. I put a few things on there. Uh, I put Fruit Machine on there and something else. I did try a Hangman one that didn't work. Let's try this one. So we click on it and then click on the arrow and that downloads it to the device. And I didn't know where to put it because if you click on this folder, then you get your diversions as your games uh, and apps or apps. So you can see they're not in there. They're not in diversions, but there are some that are already installed. So I haven't installed any of these. So there's a Tetris one and a Frogger one there. Actually, I need to have a look at those, uh, but I'll have a look at those in a minute. Um, but I saw on here, uh, App Store Downloads Hangman. So it looks like it puts it in the store folder of the of the app, 
which is just a different way of doing it. But once again, it's like anything. Once you know it's there, and that's the way they do it, that's what happens. So uh, if we do, well, spaceship looked like it was already on there, didn't it? Signal box. What does that do? It's not going to tell me what it is. I don't want any of the paid for ones. Oh, tennis. Tennis will do. Uh, so click on that and download. So let's close. Well, that's yeah. Now that's downloaded. Let's close that down, and I can launch them from these these little uh, these little folders that are opened up. So if I do i tennis. So hit the ball with the bat, control the bat by moving your mouse. The game will end when the ball falls outside of the court. Okay. Well, it's quite fast. It's weird. The, the camera's weird. Cool, though. So if I hit escape and space or click mouse to continue. Yeah, so escape again. So that's tennis. Then we've got Hangman, which I downloaded. Requires impression spell. Oh, okay. Don't know what that is, so let's leave that one. And let's close this directory down. And so we shift and double click. And then we can go into the downloads folder. So it's got, the store has got its own downloads folder. So it kind of keeps everything separate, I guess. Uh, so uh, this was Fruit Machine. This was great because I, I remember really liking Fruit Machine apps on, I'm sure it was the ZX81 I had a Fruit Machine app. Uh, so there are two ways of winning, lining up fruits on the pay line as shown in the win table or stepping forward on the feature table. This simulation is based on the machine. So it's actually, I don't think it's even a game. F or click here to finish. Because I don't, yeah, it looks like you would be able to hold here. So it looks like it just does it and then it shows you uh, there we go. So oh, we're going up thirty-four. So where's my where's my money? Where's my bank? Insert coin to start. Press I or click over the win table. Oh yeah. Oh look, I've got I've three credits now. So start. Oh, it is a game. So space to start. So we've got eight now. Is it going to go back? 17, multi-shuffle. So, I guess we go for numbers, do we? Oh. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. 10 Pete. And then we got, oh, we got a gamble, look. I got nothing. <laughs> I used to love that on fruit machines in the past, being able to gamble up. Yeah, so Fruit Machine works, and it is a game, not a demo. Uh, so let's close that down. The Hangman didn't work. The the Maze, did that work? Oh yeah, that worked. So this is Z and X to rotate and space uh, to flip the maze. I didn't use the space before, but let's, let's try that if I need to. So how am I supposed to get that in there? Oh yeah, down here, look. And you're basically getting it to go in... There we go, in through the maze, you know the sort of thing. I remember them being um, big on the iPod Touch and the original iPhone when they first came out, and they, they looked quite real. So flip it 180, oh yeah. Does the job as an old game. So let's quit out of that. Uh, so the tennis worked, Rise of the Triads. Uh, didn't work and crashed the system, so I won't go back to that. So impressive as an operating system, definitely something very different, and I just like the way that it does everything in a different way. It doesn't it doesn't behave like a modern day computer does, and I, and I think that's kind of refreshing. It's uh, you know different takes on things. We go down a path, and various different makers of operating systems kind of copy each other a lot and so things end up being in a sort of generic way and that's nice to have familiarity but it's also interesting to just try something out like this and i was just going to show those other games uh, so if we click on the folder and go to diversions and let's go for blocks first which looks like a tetris style game you can see it comes up there uh, and we've got two spins it around spacebar drops it 
So we can spin it around and move it around with one and three. So just a standard Tetris game, but always nice. And uh, let's close that one down and I Hopper, which I guess is Frogger. So 320 by 256 required by this game is not available. That's a strange one. Never mind. Uh, and Meteors. Uh, so, oh, it's straight in there. And I don't know what the controls are. Nothing's moving. <laughs> I'm dead. Oh, this would be a good one to uh, hold shift and double click on the Meteor folder, uh, which is that one. And here we'll, now you can see within that folder we've got information. So if I go to help, there we go, look, ZX and N is for new sheet, shift accelerate, space, hyperspace. So Z and X I definitely need, uh, and I just need return for now. So let's go for N. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> I still didn't do much better. N for new sheet. Turn, space, space, right. Okay, so I hope all this helped and I hope you liked it. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.